Um, you know, a team that's uh, very dangerous, especially at home. If you look at their stats in their home games, had Georgia down the other night at Georgia, very capable. Um, tough place for us to always go and play. Good matchup for us, though, size-wise, I think, and getting Aaron Barnum back potentially for some minutes is valuable. A uh, couple teams I know looking for our second SEC win, so expect a, a very energized uh, Alabama team. All right, we'll do questions and follow-ups. Paul, lead the way. Uh, Mike, can you can you just talk to us a little bit what you saw out of Aaron uh, yesterday? Really pleased. She had very diligent during her – you know, recovery with her cardio. Uh, we had our most aggressive start to practice that we've had all year, and she didn't blink. She got tired fast, but like she said, she said, I'm not going to fall out, Coach. So she did great. Uh, not not anything after practice. It was a red flag that's going to keep her from practicing again today. Um, see how it goes, and hopefully she's available for some minutes uh, on Thursday. She was good. A, a, well, uh, the other thing I was going to ask is, you know, I think you and I talked a couple of weeks ago. Is this kind of a Ray Burrell type uh, type comeback a uh, little uh, bit of the time or just wait and see? You know, I don't know. I, I'd hate to put any pre- – Ray Burrell's yeah. came back and played like an All-American, you yeah. know, from day one. So, I'd hate to put that kind of pressure on anybody. I, you know, I think Aaron gives us, um, you know, things that we've been lacking. She gives us some experience in there guarding bigger players – uh, an understanding of what it takes to win in the SEC. You know, I, I, I do not think that Jersey or Emory or Oberg have backed down one second from the fight. They just haven't done it in the SEC. So uh, I was really proud of how they've done it. But Aaron's got some moxie about her. You know, we've, we've known that about her since her high school days. She is a gamer. Um, so I, I think she'll add something. But I, I think that experience those other kids – have given us has developed us into a little bit of a toughness that I really like uh, having. Okay. But I don't know that she'll come back and, you know, be that ready. Um, okay. I, I don't know Ray's situation. I know that we've, we've made sure that Aaron is, uh, first of all, knee is structurally sound so that there's no chance that she can further damage it. Uh, and then not rush her back. You know, we've, we've taken our time with it and I think done it the right way. And she has too, but I know she's eager. Thanks, Mike. You got it. Jacob. Mike, at this point in SEC play, no, excuse me, uh, how would you assess the freshmen and, and just how they've been getting used to, you know, going up against uh, teams that, you know, just a little bit different than non-conference play? Very, very pleased. Um, you know, there's no other way to get experience than by earning it and getting it. So uh, I, I love it. I, I hate that. They've had to do it against some, like I call pros, you know, these these fifth year the guys that should be playing overseas right now, they're doing it against kids that are, you know, at work. we wouldn't even expect them to have to be playing against. So I, I think, I think if you look at it in the short, in the short lens, you're probably going, Oh, wow. That was really hard on them. But I think a year from now, when you look at the advantage that we've had by playing our freshmen, I mean, every roster in our league has got, heralded freshmen that are having a hard time playing every roster that we play has got mcdonald's all americans but they don't they don't have double figure minutes played so when when we chose to get our freshman experience we knew there would be some lumps but i think it pays off i think it's that um you know uh, delayed gratification we're going to get that reward so i'm i'm really really happy they're eager to learn um Jersey has watched as much film with me as a head coach of any freshman I've ever had. She's, she wants to get better. She knows she can improve. Um, and, and the eagerness that they have Sam's, you know, desire, she watches as much film individually. She doesn't need it. She comes and brings me thoughts. She watches it on her own. Um, the experience Emory's got, you know, and I'm still counting Riley as a freshman and Alana as a freshman. We looked out there the other night against South Carolina. We had five freshmen out there counting Sasha you know there was a there was that that little spurt there when Amber was out but we had five freshmen in there playing so um it's exciting it um it, it gives you those um that you're doing it the right way and that we made that right decision this time last year uh and, and I just I wanted to get rewarded with some wins coming up you know see what it feels like to win within the SEC but uh I, I love that they've 
continued to focus more on the process of getting better back to kind of where we were at early when we got here five years ago. Um, and, and that's a little bit refreshing and it's been good. I, we as a staff have had to really go back and coach really, really hard. And I think it's been good for all of us. We've, I, I've gotten in some bad habits of just knowing that Taylor and Jalen and uh, Chelsea and Amber and Mac, you know, who was ahead of every year, they knew what we were saying. You know, I used the word seldom yesterday in practice. I had four kids that didn't even know what the word meant. <laughs> never heard it. Swore to me they'd never heard the word seldom. <laughs> That was a shot to the face of, wow, we've got to really be intentional with our words here. That that's just not a word that may be used as much as it's seldomly used, I guess, nowadays or taught. But it, it just means that we've got to teach better. It means we've got to, you know, recover better. We've got to coach better. And, and I think it's been good for all of us as coaches. And, and I think the kids, I love the way they talk to us. Uh, I love the way that we've got, um, able to communicate and make it their team. Uh, I know they all feel ownership in this. Um, and it's a fun time. It's fun. And then just on the topic of freshmen now, halfway through January, is it safe to say we probably won't see Miriam this year? Yeah, no, we announced that. Sorry, you must have not may, may have been at that. Oh. Day. She is going to red shirt. Yeah. Okay. I missed made, that. Paul helped me. You probably, Paul's probably got the date because he was, he was tracking it pretty close. Uh, yeah. Yeah. About Christmas, wasn't it? Right after, yeah, yeah, right oh, after. Oh wow, I was, I was far off. All right, forget me. Yeah, she, she and her family and us and the doctors and everybody just with where we were at with everything and not knowing was hard because you were the way you practice. Now we know it. Now we know how to work her in practice, how to utilize her in practice, how to get extra so that she can be ready day one. And, and on that note, that like the second that we go from working on us to working on our our, our opponent. She and and Sailor just light up because they know it's it's go time. They get to be and they get to play loose and free and and I think it's going to help them both grow their games individually. These next these next what do we have about six seven weeks left before SEC order? Awesome. Pretend everyone. You got it. <laughs> Coach, how's the team been in practice? I mean, that was a very physical game. I mean, you, you come within four and then just let it slip away. Yeah, and and you know me. You've been around me enough to know we're going we're gonna to celebrate the small stuff. Uh, we're going to celebrate a 15-0 run against the best team in the country. We're going to celebrate playing them even in the second half. And, you know, anybody that's got an opinion that we shouldn't be looking at stuff like that, I could care less what they think because it matters. I think it gives us some confidence that we can do it. But it also shows us that it only takes about a three-minute span. That little three-minute, uh, once we got it back to four, had a little bit of last, had a bad turnover on the inbounds, just a miscommunication between Mac and Jersey. Uh, we lost a kid. We got a, a tough call on Amber making a three, coming off a screen that got negated. Just, again, a reminder, <clears throat> in our league, this particular year, it literally is sometimes a one or two possession change that can make the difference in a game. So good reminder of that. I like how our kids respond to those moments. I like how aware, self-aware they are of, of where we are and what we're trying to do. Um, you know, they know right where we stand. We update them every Tuesday on where we're at in the net and, and what that would mean if the season ended today. Uh, I don't want them to be surprised. I don't want them to ever have that at the forefront of their mind, but I also don't want them to be unaware. So I like how they approach it. Uh, I like how they've continued to try to make new mistakes and not the same ones that we've made. But the physicality was back again. You know, it was a really, really physical game. Uh, and this is by far our team that backs down the least of anyone I've ever had here. And they, they, they starting to take it to people at times. And I think that's a, an area we've obviously needed some improvement in. So to see that we're doing that's real, real encouraging for their coaches. My follow-up really has to go with both teams you're playing this week. Um, this this whole league seems like even the teams at the bottom, you don't know what team you're going to get when they come out on the floor. They're either having close losses or they're getting <clears throat> blown out. So in the scouting, does that help the team have a mindset of you don't know what team you're getting or does it really hinder them when they're going to preparation of they don't know what team they're going to get on the court? 
I don't think it bothers the kids one bit, Porter. I think it's us old people up here in the office that try to do too many, too much predicting and forecasting of what it could possibly look like or, you know, hey, what if they don't have this kid for this game? I think the kids, they're so used to things adjusting on them that it doesn't matter. Um, I do think what you're talking about within the league, though, uh, speaks to how good the depth of the league is that, any literally I think anybody can beat the top and I think anybody in the middle can beat the bottom or the top or lose to the bottom or the top. I think it just brings a heightened sense of you've got to be the best version of yourself, no matter what, because if you're not, you got no chance any night of the week. And I think that's from top to bottom. I think South, I think coach Staley feels like that to some degree, more so than normal. Um, and I, I think that's a good thing, but for a young team, you just got to make sure they understand that eight and eight in this league hadn't been done, but more than it's only been done four times since we've been in the SEC. So don't, don't get listening to others and our kids will know that what that means. We've had talks about others. Don't get listening to what others are talking about that don't follow what the SEC is about. Um, you focus on that, that very next game and that very next practice. And, and this group's been pretty good at that, staying together. Russell. Hey, Coach. Yep. You should have a few more fans in the stands for this road trip. Just, But how do you how do you create your own energy you know, put on a road game like this? <clears throat> um, you, can't fa- you can't fake it. Let me tell you that. It has to be authentic. If you go out there and you say, hey, we got to fire up and be rah-rah, that doesn't work. That lasts for about one possession. Um, I think they have to have learned the hard way, which I think that we have. So knowing and drawing back on that and saying, hey, you remember what happened the last time we didn't have an atmosphere like we're used to having? We can't allow that to happen. That's that's usually all it takes. Uh, But I don't think you can go in there and be somebody you're not, be fake and – do it just to create that. We will have some fans there that uh, will be loud and vocal. We've always had a good following down there. So uh, I think the magnitude of the game, knowing that, you know, I think they've lost four in a row, uh, that they will be kind of, you know, in that we're all looking for that win number two. Because if you look at the SEC standings, one win can jump you way up on the the pecking order. You know, even though it's, it's irrelevant, just one makes a huge jump. Um, and knowing who else Brown else plays and all that. So um, I, I think the kids are aware of it. I don't think we have to do anything, but I do think the lesson learned from not having it in the past is valuable, is value enough. And then when you went back and looked at the film, how was uh, Jersey plus 13 against South Carolina? What did she do well? Yeah, well, she did two things. She she really, even though she fouled, okay, and those were some technique things that I'd just done a poor job of preparing her for. In, in, in wrapping kids up. She got caught in a physical matchup. She would wrap a kid, and they would call the wrap-up, not the other contact that happened before that. Which, and I talked to the SEC officials coordinator about it. She really helped me in teaching, hopefully better. But she was she kept them from being able to score around the basket very easily. A lot of those at balls, they ended up on, on side outs rather than a basket. And we got to, then we'd get a stop on that possession. And even though she didn't shoot the ball well offensively, she moved it. And by moving it, it opened up a lot of driving lanes because she was able to draw Boston away from the basket. Uh, We created a lot of good shots. I I just thought she was real effective on both ends. And and the minutes that that she wasn't, uh, even though Emory battled and did all that, they scored more often uh, and those numbers went down. But I, I just think Jersey's confidence continues to grow. Um, she does not have to shoot it well to impact our game. We just got to keep her out of foul trouble so she can play, you know, a lot of minutes. Aaron coming back will help that a little bit as well. Era. Hey, Coach, I got just one question. You mentioned the four-game losing streak that Bama is on right now, but they're not necessarily a bad team. So do you think that 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 losing streak is any representative or representation of, of what this team can do? The losing streak is representative of who and where they've played. That's what this league is all about. When you look at records, that they mean nothing five games in if you don't look and see who and where they've had to play. You look at how they've played. You know, they had Georgia down. They've been in every game. So um, our kids watch. This group of this particular group of kids 
watch more SEC basketball than any group I've ever had. And, and it, it just varies. Like, I don't think, I mean, I'd have to tell Chelsea. Chelsea would come in and she'd say, hey, who won last, what other teams won last night? She wouldn't even know. As where you come in here and our kids are talking about, hey, did you see the end of that game? Just, I'll watch that. And, just, and so they are aware. They know. And they know how good Alabama is. They know who all these kids are. Uh, this particular group, when you go in and do a scout, the reason I really study is because I don't want to look get up there and be wrong because they're going to point it out. Like if I get a kid's number wrong, Sam's hand, no, coach, that's wrong. She's number five. Get up, no, no, coach, she's number 20. No, she's on this side. You got her on the wrong side. So they have watched it so much and they know already it really makes us in preparation. I know it does me. You'd have to talk to the other coaches, but I know I study it a little bit harder because I don't want to be up there in front of that film and, and, and have a senior moment and get a number wrong or put them on the wrong side of the floor because I will get corrected. So I, I think they know. I think they're uber aware uh, of that, you know, both teams are have one win within the league, and they know who we all we've played, common opponents. Uh, and with, with all that said, I think that's what makes this – an even a really even matchup and should should be a great game. Both of these games this week kind of have that same top feel. All right, thank you. I love that yep. the girls are keeping you in check over there. I'm oh, <laughs> On my toes. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile wagering to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's B L E A V. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite. Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts.